Norma Tech Recovery Systems give you a high-tech compression massage for warm-up pre-workout and recovery post-workout. The technology is very safe and is used by a broad range of athletic types and really any fitness enthusiast looking to get the most out of their workout. The whole idea is that we're using air compression to help increase circulation in the body. We wanted to mimic physiology the way the body moves fluids. We went ahead and, and took a lot of those principles and put it into a system that you can use on your different extremities and your hips as well. Normatech has been an industry leader in pneumatic compression, providing improved mobility and profound healing for thousands of patients. We continually work with researchers to study and develop the effectiveness of our technology. It's all about creating that community space where people have a conversation around recovery and start really challenging their beliefs in what is possible and what they've known and, and maybe what could be. won't hurt anybody. Thanks, Grandma. Paralyzed Veterans of America works tirelessly every day to create a more accessible America. Let's leave the accessible spaces to the people who actually need them. Whatever the reason, excuses don't excuse. Join PVA and be part of the solution. Honor the spot. Okay, hello and welcome. Sorry for that delay. Technical difficulties connect me. All good now, I believe. So, welcome. That uh, gives us only three and a half minutes. It's an extra minute that I don't have to fill before the race. So, welcome. Uh, yeah, as you see there, this is the last in the series of community races before we still get to the, um, the, the, I guess, the playoffs. 
Um, so we've had nine races. Today we're at uh, 29th January there, Joe Martin's stage race in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, there's been some great racing up to now. We'll bring you some of the results and uh, some of the key riders as we go through the races. But we've got uh, a lineup of uh, great races for you today. So yeah, there we go. League championships uh, start in a couple of weeks time. So uh, all the riders, this, this is part of the, obviously there's the community racing and there's also some uh, some of the pro racing that takes place after the community races. So everyone's been uh, riding uh, week in, week out. Some, not everybody's done all the, all the weeks, but uh, the people at the top of the uh, ladder are the ones who put in consistent efforts over that time. It's a great uh, effort to put that in over time. So yeah, made possible by uh, the Paralyzed Veterans of America, RGT, obviously is the platform that we're on. And one of the key features of this uh, this series of racing and RGT is the use of uh, virtually, uh, and obviously in the real world, of uh, those recumbent, paracycling recumbents that you see there. Uh, I think the only platform, certainly the first platform, and the only platform uh, to be able to offer that, which is great for those riders who have to use that because of uh, disability or injury uh, and so on. So uh, yeah, it's great to see them. That'll be one of the races that comes to you uh, later on today. So this is the course that we're going to be using today, the Joe Martin Criterium course. Uh, as I said, it's around uh, Fayetteville in Arkansas, uh, in the US. Uh, for us, of course, in, I say us, I'm in, the, I'm in the UK commentating on these. It's about four o'clock, for them it's about 11. So yeah, 505 meters climbing um, in total, um, I believe. That's not on each lap. Uh, each lap is about um, two, a bit over a mile, two kilometers. Um, so I'm trying to we use, we use kilometers, um, miles. It'll be about mile and a mile and a quarter, a bit more than a mile and a quarter, I think. Uh, uh, so that's the uh, it's, yeah, it's a classic crit course, and this is the type of crit course that you see in lots of cities. Uh, around the world, usually a couple of uh, like a mile, mile and a half long, uh, lots of nice twisty, twisty corners, uh, and the riders will have to really watch out on the corners to make sure they don't get dropped as they go around there. So we go to the start line now. We've got the men's A and the men's B races, um, both starting at the same time. So uh, uh, yeah, what have we got? We'll give you some of the names. Yes, we've got uh, there's the men's B, 26 riders uh, on the line there um including our, our camera uh so uh harris i think that's a polish flag there helfenstein chan ralph little nelson brumana uh another nelson borders uh mutis and we'll be picking out some of the riders so we've only got 20 seconds to the start now um we'll have a quick look at the men's a race so there's paul watmo we know him from uh, various others mike swat who runs rgtdb very strong rider uh cooper solly uh, we've got 28 riders in total, so we'll pick up some of the others as we go along. So we're ready to kick off now. The riders will be, yep, they'll be, it'll be always a fast start uh, online. And there you see big red numbers, big red bars as the riders kick off in this first race. So they will do, um, you see, 33 kilometers there, uh, which is, um, uh, I think, a little over um, eight laps. I might have had the time. Uh, it might be four kilometers. No, it's 16 laps. Sorry, getting getting my maths my maths wrong. So Mike Lister there, you see at the top there. Mike is actually the series leader um, in the men's A races. Gav Ash, very strong sprinter, uh, putting in a big effort. I think at this race, probably just a little bit, at this stage of the race, probably just a bit overshooting uh, the um, overshooting the line. Uh, and the bunches uh, more or less back together. A couple of riders off the back there, I can see in both the A and the B, but mostly mostly still together uh there's abbott there i'm going to try and pick out some of these names this is the first of the uh community series that i've done for rgt so uh i'm i'm gonna to have to pick out some of the riders as we go along when you do a series you often get to know the riders so greg abbott there usa cycling uh obviously uh, uh i say local us rider uh and uh, we're seeing nordland there with a the finnish flag Cooper there, so plenty of Americans uh, showing the flag there. Paul Watmo with the British flag on the front there. Uh, he'll certainly be in at the end. Um, oh, sorry, the USA Cycling is just the crit, so it might not be US. But uh, so yeah, Paul Watmo, definitely not USA Cycling. It's it's brought to you under USA Cycling, I guess, is the uh, 
connection there. So, Jaeger there in the front. So, no real big effort. So, we're sort of coming up to a little bit of a climb there. So, this is the sort of thing that tests them out. Jaden Jaeger. Uh, Jaden Jaeger, sorry. Uh, in uh, This is the sort of thing that tests them out a lot. When you're going and doing a crit like this, if you've got a little bit of a kick each time, uh, really tests the riders because every time they go up somebody you can guarantee will put in a bit of effort and the bunch has to chase them uh, and it just just uses up you know get a bit of lactic acid in your legs uses up a bit of power uses up a match as we say and uh, it takes a toll uh, as you go through on each lap so Nordland there putting out a bit of a uh, bit of an effort on that little uphill and similarly on the men's B who are at a very similar stage we've got um, Kudluka there um, I've seen him in many RGT races, very strong rider. Uh, so he's putting in uh, some effort there on the hills. They're all putting in an effort to keep up. You can see all that, look, a whole screen of red power numbers going up that little rise there. And that's what you have to do every time. And you can be sure, you're already seeing, if you look just up the back of the shot there, you can see riders dropping off the back. Every time you go up there, at least a couple of riders will drop off the back of that um, uh, of that bunch as we go up to the um, uh, up that up that little hill. So uh, I'm just going to try and bring you some. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're back in the A. There's Brask there, so he's been dropped off. One of the Danish riders, a lot of Danish riders on RG10. Paul surprisingly couldn't stay with the bunch up that that climb, so uh, he's now dropped back. There we've got Saneki in 13th place. We see Brown just ahead of him. So we're going to try and go th up through the field and see if we can pick out how many are in the... So there we go. D Gargulo, um, who I'm pretty sure I saw on Friday night riding in uh, one of the races, uh, the fr Friday Frenzy ride. So um, that's good of him to back up. Uh, he is in this bunch of, I think, 11 riders now. So that's 11 riders. So it's already whittled down by a couple of riders uh, just on that little rise was enough to, to bring people uh, off the back of that bunch. Probably the same thing happening in the B. So, yep, here we go. We've got the 17th place, Helfenstein uh, in the B, and uh, Mutis with, uh, I believe that's Lithuanian flag, um, uh, Aponte with uh, the American flag there, Nelson and Adcock in 12th and 13th place. Uh, so that means we should have, yeah, sorry, 11th, so 13th and 14th place. So that brings us up to 12th in, so 12 now in the front group uh, in the B race. So uh, that they'll settle down now. They've got a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a downhill and then a little bit of a valley and uh, flat and then up again on the other side. So it's quite a testing course, only a short course, but quite a testing course. Uh, and every time they go up, those little climbs, they're not long and they're not steep, but they're enough somebody to put in an effort and when you've got a bunch of you know 10 12 riders somebody's going to put in an effort every time you can you can guarantee it um and you as a rider in one of these bunches you just think oh please can we just not take it easy but no nope, somebody will always put in some effort going up these climbs and now we see gavash there we saw i think it was uh did I catch the name hackleton yep in the b race putting in some effort on the bunch there so it's a good thing if you're feeling strong put in a bit of effort and you just test out. Maybe you'll whittle people down. Maybe you get it down to a bunch where you can then feel a bit more confident uh, in making an attack because there are fewer people who are able to chase you down and uh, and close the gaps. So there's Mike Lister there coming to the front um, in the men's A race. As I said, Mike is actually the series leader in the community A race. He's also been riding in the um, pro races um, Mike, a very strong rider, um, big, uh, very active rider on RGT, very active in all sorts of other ways. Does uh, organises races um, and uh, does some um, news and other things as well. So um, he's a, a big RGT fan and a big uh, RGT presence. So great to see Mike, um, well, flying the flag um, for his own racing. Um, he's been doing very well. It was great to see Mike get into the um, pro racing and racing for one of the pro teams. So he'll be up later on. I guess these are sort of warm-ups um, for Mike. So as long as he's sensible, um, doesn't do anything too much, then it's a, a good warm-up for the main race. So sticking now with the A race, we've still got this bunch of uh, about uh, 
Yeah, what have we got? Still 11 riders. Uh, no, we've seen. Oh, Gargulo has, I think, has dropped off there. If I, yep, yep, he's 90 meters back. So uh, Gargulo has also dropped back on that that last little climb. So every time they go up these climbs, someone is dropping off the back uh, of one of these bunches. It's tough. It's tough to keep on. Ah, Mike Swore <laughs> doing the victory celebration, possibly slightly early there. Um, I, I, don't, I think it's slash forward slash win, I think, is the uh, shortcut, if I remember correctly, um, to do the uh, victory celebration. Maybe he's just testing it out, but um, well, that's a brave thing to do with 28 kilometers still to go, but, uh, but well done, Mike, um, at least for showing us how it's done. Johan Nordlund there uh, from Finland in 10th place. So this bunch is now down to 10 riders who still have 28 kilometers to go on this, uh, I guess, fairly rolling course. And I think we're, we're already lapping someone. Gosh, uh, I'm surprised that, uh, that they've caught up that quickly, uh, especially in the A race, uh, possibly some sort of technical problem. So here we go. Numbers going to the red now. So, you know, there's no hanging back. There's no relaxing on these little climbs. You've got to make sure you're on the wheel. You've got to make sure you're there when you get to the, the top. Otherwise, the gap goes out very, very quickly. So we've got um, Dumper there from Canada, Solly from Norway. We're going to watch them both. Uh, looks like the B race is about 500 meters back there, slightly uh, slower pace uh, on the same course than the A race, not surprisingly. Although, you know, you race, you race the race. Um, Sometimes, especially in real life, uh, even a, a, a more elite race or a high race can be slower because people are being a bit cagey um, and are just racing each other rather than racing to a, to a time. It's not a time trial after all. But uh, in this case, they are a bit faster in the A race, but with the B race here, so we've still got 11. Um, we're going up in the middle of this climb. Nobody showing signs of dropping off so far, which is good, but uh, certainly some red numbers keeping them honest there. A little bit of a gap there, but I think they'll get that back. Got a few meters still to go uh, to the top of this climb. So uh, hopefully they won't lose track. It's always, uh, you know, it's always a big mental thing when you're in one of, the, of these races, whether it's a virtual race or a real life race, you're getting to the top of that climb. You've just got to dig in and make a little bit more effort to make sure you get to the top. And often when you do that, you get a bit of recovery on the way down. The worst thing is when you give up and then you see the bunch sort of ease off a bit, but, but they're 20, 30 meters ahead of you and it's too late to catch up then. Uh, often happens that the bunch, you know, there's a, there's a period of for whatever, somebody's attacking or it's a, um, there we go, through the finish line now. So the A's uh, have gone through the finish line, the B's just going through the finish line uh, now. Uh, so yeah, as I say, it's often a um, difficult thing when um, you know there's a bit of uh, technical, maybe it's a technical part of the course or uh, a bit of a climb, a bit of attacking, uh, and there's often a period uh, which tests everybody. You know, the mental thing is, it, can I, can you put up with it uh, more, a little bit more than everybody else? And uh, sometimes you give up and you let the wheel go, and then you see 50 meters down the road that they've. Uh, decided to, to ease up a bit and uh, if you have just made that little bit more effort you would have been in there and you would have been able to recover but too late so uh, I think everybody's uh, stayed safe there what are we seeing no no I think we're seeing the bees there we've got Honcho and Hackleton so Hackleton who we saw at the front and borders so actually the bees that little uh, that little rise has taken it down from 11 to 8 so Honcho there in 9 it's it's not impossible it's 40 meters a big effort would get there there's two of them together if they can work together put in some big numbers they've got a little bit of a downhill here come on mike put in yes come on he's putting in five what's killer come on but you've got to close it fast that's always the secret to any gap don't try to do it over time you've got to put in maximum effort get back to that bunch and do it as fast as possible um, the difficulty here is, I think he's, I think he is going to close it. It's gone from 40. It's now just under 20, just under 30, 25. They're going to do it, but they're going to do it just as we get to another rise. So uh, it's a, a difficult time. Hopefully he'll get in there, and he's still going to have to keep going. They can't. They're not going to get much time to recover. Uh, yes, well done, well done, well done, Hackleton and Honcho. Good effort there to get back onto that bunch. Um, but, you know, don't, oh, no, 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 don't let the gap go again. No, <laughs> keep that wheel because they've got a little bit of a rise coming up 
and he's got to make sure that he gets into the bunch. That's another thing when you're, uh, again, in, in real life or virtual racing, when you get back to the bunch, don't sit on the back. Make sure you go up in the bunch, try and get into the middle. Um, and then you've got a little bit more, um, you've got more wheels around you and you've got a little bit more time to recover um, before you go back. So it uh, looks like they're safely in the middle there. This rise is about um, kicking up there to 6%, but I don't think it'll be for long. So hopefully Hackleton and Honcho will stay in that bunch, which brings it back to, to 10. So back to the men's A race now. There's Mike down the front. Uh, we picked out Mike Swart there, uh, looking comfortable in this bunch of 10 riders uh, and yeah, big gaps now back to so it looks like uh, Gulo and Brown have, uh, have decided that they, they seem to be riding and you know, there's about 50 60 meters separating them so we've got this bunch of, uh, of 10 riders now with some high quality riders here Kellison, Mount, Abbott, uh, Lister we can see their names there, Dumper, Jaeger, uh, who haven't I picked out? Gav Ash uh, and I think, yeah, that's it. So this is a, an elite group of 10 who are going to contest the remaining 20, just under 24, uh, 25 kilometers of this race, which uh, if I think correctly is about, uh, about uh, 15, 16 miles. Uh, so here we go. Uh, hey, Salty. Yep, looked like he just might have had a little bit of a gap there. Torleif Salty, Norwegian flag there uh, looked like a little bit of a gap there but he uh, quickly closed it down as I said what we're not seeing in the profile is the the overhead so you know as, as you can see through the um, uh, the, the front the head shot there are quite a lot of corners here and you've really got to pay attention on the corners uh, in any race real life or virtual um, you can just get on the wrong side of the pack um, you can be in the wrong place and uh, you just lose a bit of ground as you come out of the corner and often what happens is the bunch especially at the front powers out of the corner yeah so there's a good shot of a, a fairly tight corner and and you can see how it stretches out there so you see those riders there salty at the back there mount in the middle so there's already a bit of a gap just going around that corner the guys at the front there on the the red because it's it's also going into that hill so they're taking the opportunity of both the corner and the hill to put in a bit of effort and that has really stretched out this this small bunch. Really good tactical racing there from uh, so Jaeger, Lister, and Swat uh, on the front. So that's great riding to try to take the opportunity as we come through the finish line again, uh, as they try to take the opportunity to just whittle away at the bunch. Because you know if you've got a bunch of ten and you can whittle it down to a bunch of five or six, well you're guaranteed uh, whatever happens. Um, even if you're not a great sprinter, you're guaranteed fifth or sixth place, which might be better than what you would get in the lottery of a bunch finish. Uh, so it's always good tactics if you can uh, do what you can to whittle away, especially if you're not one of the riders who has uh, a big finish with big watts at the end. So we're seeing uh, the bunch in the A's there and the bunch in the B's. Yeah, oh, looks like oh, for all that effort, looks like Honcho and Hackleton that last little rise was too much for them uh, and it looks like they've, they've been properly gapped now so we've got eight now in the B um, but you know good effort it was good good effort from them to uh, get back not give up um, but obviously that's the problem so you burn matches um, they made a big effort to get back in there um, they had that little rise coming straight afterwards and uh, obviously next time they were called upon to burn a match they found that they had none left. So uh, bad luck there, but uh, hopefully they will, uh, there's about 40 meters separating them and I see borders not far back. So maybe those three guys can um, can group up. Yeah, 106 meters back, 140, 170. So 70 or 80 meters covering those three riders, Hackleton, Honcho and Borders. If they can pair up, I don't think they'll catch this uh, front bunch again. Um, but hopefully the three of them can pair up and uh, or pair up tri trio up and uh, and ride together uh, to make sure that uh, they're not uh, caught by more riders behind and uh, also have a little race amongst themselves. Often what happens in these uh, online races where you get such a diverse range of ability that uh, 
what people tend to do is it becomes a race within a race. You race the riders around you, you race the people that you know are at your level, um, or you race people in your, if it's an age group uh, thing, you race people there. So there we saw Hackleton there in ninth place, Honcho now just coming through the finish line, uh, and there's Borders back in 11th place. So uh, if Borders can make a bit of an effort there and catch up with uh, Honcho, and uh, then they can get together up to Hackleton, uh, then they might form a little group. So Billington, bit f sorry, Billing a bit further back now. He's another 200, uh, 200 more than 200 metres back. So I don't see Andrew, Andrew Billing there. Um, don't see uh, him being able to catch uh, Borders, Honcho and Hackleton ahead, but uh, not far back from Billing to Adcock. So that's maybe another couple of riders who can get together and work together to uh, keep a decent pace throughout the race. So back to 14th place, Nelson, um, Aponte there, um, the US leg just cresting that little little sharp, but uh, clearly quite vicious rise. Little there, we saw in the front bunch earlier on, and Mutis uh, with the, I, I do want to say, Lith 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 no, it's not Latvian, Lithuanian, I'm pretty sure it's one of the Baltic flags, but maybe somebody can uh, tell me. Uh, Tyler there with the US flag, Vistula, Danish, and Roberts in a little trio there. Tyler looking like he's uh, just being overtaken by the two of them there as they crest that little rise. Uh, Helfenstein, or Helfenstein there, um, with the uh, US flag in 21st place. Uh, looks to sort of be in no man's land there. He's got 100 meters to the rider ahead and 50, 60 meters to the rider behind, which is who we see now, uh, Schultz. Riding, still riding strongly, putting in, you know, three, 3.2 uh, watts per kilo as we go up that uh, little rise. Brumana there um, yeah, from with the Italian flag. Um, so, you know, they, they, they've often, you know, what you have to do if you're not in the front bunch is just settle in, keep a steady pace, ride it at a pace that you know you can sustain um, for the whole race. So we're back with the front bunches now in the A's and the B's. Uh, let's see if anything's happened. So we've still got ninth in the nine, sorry, in the um, uh, the A bunch, and we look to still have eight in the B. So uh, I think it's the situation is the same as when we left it last time uh, in both of those bunches. But we're coming up to another of those sharp little rises, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, again, as we go up here, they, they come thick and fast. There is really very little rest on this course. None of those little downhills, but uh, but gosh, it, it is a it is a nice little course. But then that's 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 crit racing. That's criterion racing for you to come through the finish yet again in the B race. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's crit racing for you. Um, there really is no rest in crit racing. Um, even if it's a flat course in crit racing, you're always got riders powering out of those corners. Um, and making a big effort. And, and if you're at the back of a bunch, um, midway to, to the rear of a bunch, then what happens is you get that caterpillar effect. Um, there's often a gap coming out of the corner and, and you have to make even more effort coming out of the corner to catch back on the bunch. And we're seeing a little bit of that, I think, on some of these uh, corners here, particularly the ones that are coming into the hills. So big red numbers there for the front bunch there, SWAT, Salty, Nordland, Lister, Mount, Dumper, Abbott, Ash, uh, all putting in, uh, apologies if I missed anybody there, but all putting in big numbers coming up this little rise to make sure they're caught. Mike Swart there got a little bit of a gap. I think he may, may have just uh, overshot the power. I don't think he's trying to get away, but, uh, but we'll see as they come through the finish line yet again. Uh, yeah, I think they're going to chase Mike down. It's uh, it's not a serious attack. It's just a little bit of a gap that he uh, overshot so he came up there and the bunch will get back to him again. Mike looking very colour coordinated there on his uh, very nice uh, sort of a, it's not a lime green, a sort of sage green BMC uh, matching his jersey there with the uh, dark green to the light green, sort of a, a forest green, shall we say. Uh, looking good there. There's Mike. Of course, you can choose different bikes. Um, not so uh, complete class, but different bikes and different kits. So people tend to uh, use quite a lot of the white canyons uh, being used there. Um, of course, this uh, 
series in this race is being uh, brought to you by Saris, who uh, do a great line in well, lots of things, actually. They're a, a very diverse company. Um, I've certainly used them um, with their bike racks, um, which they're very well known for. And uh, they also have uh, trainers. Uh, so, um, you know, indoor trainers, which is a very appropriate thing for virtual cycling. So, Mike, actually, I said that wasn't a serious attack. But it has come out. I mean, partly that's because they've just come down this little, um, they've come over that hill, they've crested that hill and are coming down and, and 15 metres very quickly turns into 30 or 40 metres just, just because of the distance and the increased speed. But um, it has got out very quickly. I'm slightly surprised that uh, the riders behind have let it go. And Mike has a bit of a gap now up to my, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's probably too far out if it was maybe five, six kilometers to go, I think Mike would be thinking, hmm, maybe I should uh, make it, uh, what I can of this gap and uh, stay out. But I think at 18 kilometers to go, it would be a very, very brave rider who uh, decided to try and power away uh, and stay away, particularly with some, you know, strong riders behind. Although, as I said, Mike is doing, Mike Lister is doing the pro racing later so he won't be wanting to drag the whole bunch along and do a major effort uh, he needs to save his legs for later on um i'm trying to think uh, gav ash um certainly um no gav, gav actually has dropped off so uh, gav is not in that group uh anymore so we're about, about down to eight now uh in the group so that little rise has done for gav ash as well uh, so we're down to eight. So it's a question of who's going to, yeah, the, they're, they're caught back to him now. So again, the little, the opposite effect. So I said the, the 15 meters very quickly becomes 40, 50 meters on a downhill and 40, 50 meters very quickly becomes 10, 15 meters and no meters uh, on an uphill. So, so I didn't think it was a serious attack. And Mike, obviously being very sensible, uh, decided to uh, let the bunch capture him again and uh, just ride along in the bunch as much as he can. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, first rule of racing, never do anything you don't have to. So uh, wise of Mike to stay there. So we're back in the Bs now. So uh, here we go with Plastido in uh, with the Portuguese flag in eighth place. So uh, we'll check how that bunch is going. So that bunch has now gone down from eight to seven. Uh, now in the B race, still with 19 kilometers to go. So we're not halfway yet in either of the uh, these A and B races, but uh, the bunch has been whittling down steadily. So uh, Hans Kutlicker there, the German flag, David Brockou, uh with the uh, Dutch flag there, Nelson, American Prince, uh, with the Canadian flag. So looking comfortable, but uh, who will be the next? to draw the short straw and drop out on one of these little climbs. So we've seen the A's now coming down this little rise. Uh, Nordland there, oh, gee, splitting up again. But again, I think that's just uh, course dynamics and uh, riders getting a little bit of a gap as they crest. Um, and it will quickly come back together as they hit the bottom and come back up the other side. Uh, Solly and Mount there in sixth and seventh place, trying to get back on. But oh, Mike Lister has uh, there's a 60 meter gap back to Mike Lister. Now, as I said, Mike is, is racing the pro race later on, so I'm not. I, I, Mike could absolutely keep up with his bunch if he really wanted to, but I think sensibly, um, he's probably using it as a bit of a warm up and is not going to put in a massive effort to try and chase down. It looks like he's decided to let the bunch go now. So the bunch is now down to seven riders um, without Mike. So that could be a time for somebody, I mean, 16 kilometers, still a long way to go, but it does mean that if anybody wants to put in uh, a big attack, that uh, one of the riders who could potentially chase them down, um, possibly not over a long period because of wanting to save his legs, but certainly in a short range attack, Mike would be well able to cover some of the uh, short gaps. So Jamie Dumper there, um, if I may, with the Canadian flag. Um, in uh, second place there, going along behind Nordland, our Finnish rider. Um, and again, just Nordland likes to seem, seem, seems to be one of these people who likes to just push it a little bit. Johan Nordland uh, likes to push it a little bit up these climbs. Very sensible. I mean, maybe it's because he's just, you know, trying to test them out, but also it's just sensible to make sure that you don't get a gap and you're not being left behind 
here. If you've got the legs and you're comfortable doing it, then why not make sure that you're the one who is uh, at the front and not going to be distant. So same thing here as we crest that little rise now on the uh, B race, it looks like we've got Kudlika and Prince. And uh, that's a bit of a gap now. They've got uh, 70 meters. So we have a breakaway. We have a breakaway in the men's B race. Nelson trying to chase him down, but his numbers aren't, uh, aren't in the red now. So I don't think he's making a massive effort to try and bridge across to these riders. So Nelson, I think, has a... Yeah, so we've got a really broken up ride now. So we've got Kudlika and Prince out front. We've got Nelson in third, who is in no man's land between them. And now we come back to four, five, six, and seven, a little group of four riders, the, the remnants of that front group, um, who have obviously lost the wheel of uh, Kudlika and Prince, but uh, are riding along and they've now got uh, 160 meters. Um, so they've let that group go. Um, doesn't look like anybody's putting in massive efforts there. We're seeing mostly sort of blues and greens, which means they're riding well below threshold. And uh, well, similarly in the men's A, we have a break. We have Nordland. Uh, we noticed uh, at that previous little rise that Nordland was putting in some consistent efforts going up those little climbs. And it seems that one of them has paid off. And uh, he's now got a decent gap of 70 meters. So a very similar situation uh, in the A race. It's all exploding at roughly the same time. Uh, Nordland has a gap of uh, 50 meters um, back to Jaeger. Uh, Jaeger going to the red numbers there. So Jaeger is definitely trying to bridge across to Nordland. If they can get two riders together, that's very sensible. Um, they can work together, try and keep together and uh, keep away. Uh, so they're coming up to this little rise now. So I think Jaeger will get onto Nordland's wheel here and we'll have a front pair, so a mirror to the, from the men's A and the B race, a front pair away. Uh, we've got now, just looking back there, so I thought there might have been a third right in the middle, but it looks like we've got Dumper, Abbott, Swart, Solly, and Mount. So that group is, is, is stayed together. We haven't got anybody in the middle. So we've got a group now of um, four, four riders who are working together. Mount, uh, no, he's back in seven. So Mount has been distanced. Yeah, I thought I saw a gap. So Mount has been distanced. So we've got two riders out front and then we've got four riders uh, chasing that group ahead. So Nordland and Jaeger now putting in some big uh, numbers here, six, seven watts per kilo as we go up that little rise. If they can crest this rise um, with a 50, 60 meter gap as they look to be doing, that will quickly go out to, uh, I think, well, to easily over a hundred meters um as they uh, go down the other side it's a little bit of a, a flat or a slight plateau um, as you go past the finish line there uh, and that's going to be an interesting finish certainly uh if, if anybody comes to the line uh, with other people on their wheel it's going to be a real power finish coming up to that uh, finish line so uh Nordland and Jaeger now coming down the other side. So yeah, as I said, that 50, 60 meters has quickly gone out to 100 meters as they come down and they have a little bit of a, um, so what do we got, th minus three, 4% here, a little bit more of a plateau and then um, an even sharper descent uh, to come. So they've got a few hundred meters of this, which gives them a chance to recover. As you can see, they're in sort of uh, Nordland there in sort of light blue, Jaeger in the darker blue, meaning that they're um, recovering pretty well they're doing uh you know they're taking turns which is good they have to keep the power up they have to keep the speed up um they're, they're doing so four or five watts and then occasionally having a chance to ease back to three or four we just got this little it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's 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 not a flat it's minus two minus three but uh it won't be quite as much of a descent as you get in other parts of the uh course but now they're heading to minus four and seven so they will yeah, we see Nordland there back to 1.5, very sensible, getting a bit of recovery on Jaeger's wheel. Jaeger back at three watts per kilo. So getting a bit of recovery as we come down. So what's happening now in the B race? So we still, yep, Kudlika and Prince have put in, uh, a, wow, it's almost identical, isn't it? So Kudlika, both of the pairs have about 260, 270 meters. Uh, and uh, yeah, but they're almost two kilometers back on the on the B race. So actually, I think they're at almost identical parts of the course, um, but uh, just a lap difference. So uh, Kudlika and Prince have exactly the same sort of gap, 260 meters um, to uh, as Jaeger and Nordland have in the A race. 
uh, yeah, nearly nearly at the same point uh, in the race, which is uh, interesting. Um, and uh, interesting how the tactics have evolved or have, have emerged uh, almost identically. So we had uh, attacks at uh, almost the same time, same point on the race, uh, slightly, well, I say a lap, a lap different, but, um, but very similar points in the race and very similar parts of the course. And uh, both with a pair of riders, or one ride, one strong rider breaking away, and another rider bridging up uh, to join them and work together. Very sensible. Always getting the break was what one of my old coaches used to say. Although you know these uh, all seven or eight riders in, in the respective A and B groups were in the break, um, and you know it means even if two riders break away, well you're still aiming for a top six or seven finish, um, even if you finish back in the bunch. So. We uh, cross the start line now again in the finish line, start finish line in the A race. And uh, we can see, I think, the B race just coming up to it. So they're about a lap and a tiny bit further back coming up to this, uh, coming up to this little rise. So yeah, it's, it's about, uh, say, two kilometers in each lap. So Nordland and Jaeger now taking it away. So they're maintaining their 260 meter gap as they got to that finish. So that's going to go out even more. So it's always one of the things in the in the crits. Um, as a rider and as a spectator, you uh, one of the great things about crits is they come around so often that you're always looking to see, well, has the gap got bigger? Um, has the distance gone out? Has the time gap increased on each lap? Um, that's one of the most exciting things about it. If you ever get a chance, um, to watch any, um, I'm not sure what it's like in America, but in, in the UK and in Europe, um, we have what we call town crits, um, where they will do it on a course similar like this, around a, a city course. Um, I'm sure you did the same thing over there. Um, in Europe, you have what we, they call them kermesses in Belgium, um, a very similar thing, a short course around a village or a town. Uh, and it's great racing because you've got riders flashing by all the time. So Jaeger and Nordland now have brought that gap out to 400 meters. So Abbott, I think, has decided he's had enough of riding with this little bunch of four. And Abbott now is deciding to break away. So Abbott breaking away just as we come to this uh, little downhill. Um, he'll certainly bring a gap to the bottom, but the question will be, can he maintain it going up the other side? If he can put in some decent power going up the other side, crest that rise and take that gap, then he might be able to maintain a gap to that chasing bunch of three um, and uh, keep away for the rest of the race. So he's got 10 kilometers to go, um, but um, yeah, they don't do a third of the race and they've done 34. So we're looking at about you know, 45, 50 minute uh, race. A typical crit. Often, what happens in uh, closed circuits and crits is the obviously on, the, on a, a thing like RGT, you have to specify the number of laps. But usually, what happens on a short course with a crit is the race might be 50 minutes or an hour plus three laps or plus five laps. So, so you race for 50 minutes, uh, and then there's a, a whistle or the lap board goes up and says you've got three laps to go, uh, and that becomes the distance of the race. So it doesn't matter really how fast you go. You can race it as slow as you like. Uh, but when you get to that 50 minutes, it's three laps to go. Uh, I can assure you I've never been in a slow crit race. They always do end up being fast because of that uh, attempt to whittle down the field. Somebody's always trying to uh, get people off their wheels. So we're back behind that, uh, so well, not front group, front pair, chaser and the group behind. And this is the, the group further back. So. Uh, I don't know whether to call them the third group or the fourth group on the road. They're the third group, if you take the pair. So um, we've got Lister, Kellison, Brask. So Lister, we saw let that group go as he uh, takes it a little bit easy ahead of his pro race earlier on. Uh, we've got Cooper there in uh, 11th place and uh, Collins there in 12th. And I think they might be lapping Galino is why he's showing uh, 16th. So, so yeah, we've got this little group of four riders here who are still working away. Um, but uh, uh, some way back on uh, the, the bunch that is competing uh, for the finish. We saw Gargulo there, who was in the early bunch, um, being overtaken now by Brown, um, moving up from 15th to 14th place. Hopefully those uh, uh, guys will work together. We've got Golino there, 
in 16th and I'm guessing that that means that Galino has actually been lapped by Cooper uh, and Collins doesn't stop him being able to ride with them and work with them um, Pereira there Portuguese rider in 17th place uh, is quite some way back so um, yeah somewhere back on uh, uh, I think even a couple of laps back on the front riders Pes Pesalin there the Spanish flag a uh, long way further back, so uh, Eagle Eye there, yep, these guys have got uh, 15.8 kilometers to go. So they're uh, some five or six kilometers back on the front riders who were, were already under 10, 10, 10 kilometers to go. Umu, uh, with the German flag, there in 20th place. So we come back to the front of the race now in both A and B. So Nordland and Jaeger are maintaining their gap. Gabbett there, if we see, is 340 meters behind and Swart and the rest of that group at 540. So Abbott has come up that other side in good shape, has maintained the gap to the others, and is now in a sort of no man's land between the front pair and uh, the chasing trio. And the other race, in the B race, we have Kutlicker and Prince, who uh, are also maintaining, uh, working together nicely, maintaining their gap. Nobody is seriously chasing them. They've got 560 meters now which is uh you know a quarter of a lap uh, or more back to the chasing bunch of one two three four five riders behind them uh so broku nelson two nelsons harest and chan who are chasing prince and kutlika well i say chasing they're not they're not I, I, i'm sure if prince and kutlika suddenly blow up and uh lose all their um, their energy, then uh, they will be swallowed up very quickly. But uh, I think what we're seeing is a race for the front and a race for third place uh, between these two groups. So Prince and Kudluk are there looking strong uh, and I'm pretty sure that they will be taking it uh, to the end of the race. But uh, these guys aren't going to give up. They're there, they're ready to pounce if something happens uh, and uh, somebody gives up or has a, a mechanical or so on. So Nelson uh, with the American flag, Harest, uh, with the Polish flag, uh, Chan there with the Canadian, uh, uh, M. Nelson uh, also with the uh, US flag, uh, and these are the four riders who, uh, sorry, five riders. Yeah, Broku from the uh, with the Dutch flag. Sorry, I missed him out. Um, these are the five riders who are making up the uh, chase. Me, Richard Nelson. Thank you for uh, bringing up that graphic from our um, producer there, Damon, um, and uh, clearing up. So we've got R. Nelson and M. Nelson, uh, both with the American flags, and Vistula, Vistula there, um, showing in 13th place. So I think Vistula is, um, is a lap back, uh, but uh, he'll take the opportunity to pick up those wheels while he can and uh, get some um, extra speed, extra distance, um, as he tries to may finish the race. So David Brocou there in third place, leading this bunch up the little rise uh, with 10 kilometers exactly to go uh, in the B race and Kutlika and Prince um, 300 meters out in front, but that will quickly go up as we go down the other side of this uh, little rise here. So we're going to go back to the dual screen here, the A and the B. Uh, Abbott there with his uh, lone solo effort, but uh, good effort. He's uh, bringing it out uh, against the bunch chasing. So the Swart, the Swart Dumper uh, and uh, Salty Bunch. Oh no, Salty has uh, dropped off. Salty, the Norwegian rider, has dumped, has, uh, I say dumped, because <laughs> I saw a Dumper, has, uh, has fallen off the back of this little trio here. So Swart and Dumper uh, look like they're going to continue riding strongly salty has let them go and now has a 34 35 meter gap uh, up to them not unrecoverable it's the bottom of this little uh little descent he'll be able to if he puts in a big effort right now he would be able to get back on their wheel but he really needs to do it now and i'm not seeing the numbers going he's doing 2.53 watts per kilo and uh swart and dumper are doing over four so he he needs to go big red now if he's going to get on the wheel of these guys and uh maintain himself as part of this trio so he's going red now he's going up to five watts per kilo 
uh, now, but I think it, it might be a little bit too late. I think you really need to put that effort in. Uh, sol Solly there, sorry, I was saying salty. Um, that's my eyesight. Uh, Solly there with the Rassio Racing. Uh, um, that's that little two reverse stars. But I, I think he's just left that effort a little bit late. You, you really need to push at the base of those climbs to catch up. And, you know, you can catch up very quickly if you come with big speed into those climbs. Um, you can get on the wheel very quickly, but I think he left it a little bit late. And now we see the gap, as we're not even at the top of the climb yet, the gap um, from Solly to Swart and Dumper has gone out to over 60 or 70 meters. And uh, I think Solly can say goodbye to Swart and Dumper. Yep, I think he is going to realize that uh, he's not going to catch them. I mean, he's still doing 4.5 watts per kilo, but um, I think he's realizing that he's not going to catch those guys. Uh, Swart and Dumper, uh, and so they're going to continue as a pair. So, back at the front of the race now, Jaeger and Nordland. We see on the left there, Jaeger and Nordland, back at the front of the race. With uh, getting to the pointy end now, so under five kilometers, we're under the five kilometer banner uh, now for, for uh, Jaeger. Uh, Jaden Jaeger and uh, Johan Nordland uh, in the A race. They are, have a good 600 meter lead to Abbott, who has put in an excellent effort to uh, chase them in third and looks like he will be securing uh, the third place podium. Don't think he's going to catch the front pair, but uh, equally don't think he's going to be caught by Swart and Dumper, although it's 400 meters. It's not impossible, um, depending on whether Abbott can maintain that power. In the B race, so Kutlika there has a little bit of a gap. Is this an attack from Kutlika? Um, Kutlika and Prince were riding nicely together, uh, but I saw, no, Prince has got back on his wheel. I just saw that gap go out to sort of 10, 15 meters um, as we came across the crest of that uh, climb. So I wondered whether Prince might have found it hard going um, up that little rise, but they're back together. Um, there's Honcho there. How quickly that, uh, that, so Honcho there being lapped. I mean, Honcho was with this front group that had Prince and uh, Kutlika in it not that long ago, but um, so quickly you can be lapped uh, on these courses, particularly once you sort of start to ease back to a steady pace. So Honcho is going to ride with them there, take advantage of a bit of draft, take advantage of some wheels, as can Prince and uh, Kutlika. So they're back together. They have seven kilometers to go. So uh, now a bit of a, I think a lap and a half behind uh, the front riders. Um, I should mention Mike Swart, in, who's in the A race, he is in um, uh, second place overall. And I'm just going to have a quick look. So Broku, we saw Broku in that, David Broku in that uh, bunch chasing. He is the leader in the B uh, series. Uh, Borders, we see there, B Borders uh, is in 10th place here and is in third place uh, overall. Um, has done most, I think, you know, what you're finding is these aren't necessarily guys who are winning the races, but they're doing it consistently and they're getting consistent places. And that's obviously the key uh, to any series. And we are also seeing some good riding there. I'm just checking to see if Kutlika or Prince have been doing uh, previous races, but um, yeah, I'm not seeing them. Certainly, I'm not in the first few. So, uh, so sort of first page, sort of the 50 riders. So maybe they have, but uh, are further down. But uh, it looks like some of those riders on the first page have only done one. So uh, yeah, we're seeing there now. So um, okay, so we're going to stick with the A and B race, but we're coming to the end. We've only got three kilometers. Going race, and as we see now, they're lining up for the next, which is going to start in just under five minutes' time. We have uh, the women's open, uh, and uh, I can't quite see how many riders we have on the line, but uh, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven riders there um, on the line. Uh, I can see see Anna Ronkainen there, who is the uh, Finnish rider, uh, and she is the leader of the women's series. Uh, we've got also the hand cycling and the paracycling. Um, so they'll all be kicking off together in just under five minutes time. Uh, we will cover them all. Uh, we will probably have finished the men's A race. And we'll probably have a little bit to go in the men's B race. So we'll be juggling some racing uh, as we go into that um, multi-event. 
So yeah, there we're seeing the lineup now of the women's race uh, and back to the men's A race now. So Nordland and Jaeger uh, keeping it together as we come up this little rise. This will be the last time they come up here on a lap. Next time they come up here uh, it will be to the finish uh, and that will be the, well, they're putting out seven, eight watts per kilo coming up here now with uh, a lap to go. So next time they come up, it'll be uh, uh, absolutely all, uh, let's say all hands to the pump or legs to the pump or legs will be pumping hard as they come up. Whoever can crest that little rise with, uh, what's that, about 40, 50 meters to go. If you can crest that little rise ahead then uh, and take your speed up, then I think whoever will get that to the top of that rise first will be the one who, who wins. I can't see it that 40, 50 meters uh, being made up if you're not already in front crossing there. So Nordland now has taken a bit of a gap over that uh, climb, but um, not a serious gap. Jaeger is uh, closing it down. So these two riders have a 450 meter um, head, uh, 450 meter gap over Greg Abbott in third place. And then it's another 300 uh, or more meters back to Swart and Dumper. So um, that looks like our, our podium certainly is going to be Nordland, Jaeger and Abbott. Uh, Swart is going to get a good result and will uh, probably move up in this series because he'll be finishing a few places um, ahead of uh, Mike Lister. I'm just going to get a sense of the gap. So um, there's about 30. 45 points between them. Um, uh, off the top of my head, I, I, yeah, so Lister will be uh, for a few, three or four places back. So uh, I think that might not be uh, uh, 35, might be only sort of 20 points, but it will certainly close the gap uh, between first and second. Um, Jaeger there, who's in, um, just looking at the gaps, the uh, overall series, Jaeger there, Jaden Jaeger, um, is actually in fourth place overall. He's won uh, two races. Uh, he's come second uh, in another and uh, looks like third in, in another. So some great results there from uh, Jaden Yeager. He hasn't done as many races as some of the other riders, but uh, the ones he's done, he has finished very highly up and uh, certainly looks to be keeping that as we go. Now we're into the final kilometre. We've come under the Flamme Rouge. We have 600 metres to go. So Northern and Yeager now coming up to this little rise. They're going to fight it out for the finish. Um, if uh, Jaeger can do that, he will certainly move up. He's uh, 95 points, I think, or 85 points behind uh, Mike Lister. So Jaeger could move to the front. So 500 metres to go. Jaeger and Nordland positioning themselves. Nordland coming to the front. I think Nordland from previous efforts will try to power up this climb. He certainly has the legs and the power to go up these little rises. Um, but they're just, they're in the green now. Nobody's uh, giving anything away now. Uh, Jaeger now going, oh, big effort by Nordland. Big effort going big red, over 10 watts per kilo. We saw flash up on the screen there. So Nordland has made his move. 270 meters to go for Nordland, 250. Jaeger trying hard. Jaeger now over 10 watts per kilo. Is Jaeger going to catch him? Jaeger getting on the wheel. He's in the draft of Nordland. Not much draft up the 10% slope, but he's on the wheel. He's going to go past. Yes, he powers past Nordland. Powers past Nordland, he'll hit that rise first with a 15 meter gap. Nordland is not getting that back. So Jaeger is going to cross the line with a fantastically timed attack. Don't be the first to attack, be the second. And uh, that was the great, good, good tactics for Jaden Jaeger there. Another win, that's the third series win for Jaden Jaeger, but also an excellent result from uh, Nordland. Uh, well done to both those riders for animating this race and making a uh, very good long range attack um, with more than 10 kilometers to go working together and powering across so uh, Abbott now bringing it in uh, it's got 200 meters to go he's got nobody near him up this climb he can uh, not relax nobody's going to relax going up a climb uh, like this but uh, he's not going to be caught he's going to be safe in third spot uh, in the men's a race with uh, 100 meters to go uh, dumper and swat uh, together behind him with Solly, um, not that much further back behind them, but uh, he just couldn't keep on their wheel. So uh, Abbott there, finishing off the podium there, good uh, finish there for Greg Abbott in third place. So uh, as we, oh, we've started on the other races, so we'll catch up with them. So, um, yep, we've just, uh, just started. So we're only about 500 meters into those races. So uh, I'm gonna try and call. So Spart there with Dumper, I think Dumper, going past Swart 
uh, on the Mike Swat on the line there. So Dumper taking fourth place and uh, just uh, putting in a big effort there to go past Mike Swat uh, and take fifth. And then Solly will be safe in sixth place behind uh, Mike Swat. He crosses there in fifth. Well done, Mike. That's a good result uh, for him. Uh, good consistent result. Solly there in sixth place. Uh, Kellison, not that much further behind, only 30, 40 meters, but he's not going to catch him in this. Uh, and then uh, Lister uh, and Mount together. I'm sure that Mike Lister will put in some big um, numbers to cross the line in, uh, I think, will be uh, eighth place for Mike Lister. Oh, is Mount, oh, Mike, well, Mount just pipped him on the line. Well done. Uh, good effort there from Mount to uh, just pip Mike Lister on the line so mike uh, goes down into ninth place um be interesting to see how that uh i'm not sure what the points difference is between fifth and ninth i think it goes to five points once you get down to that so it'll probably be about 20 25 points different so i don't think enough for mike swat to overtake mike lister at the top of the standing so if that's the case congratulations to mike lister for uh taking the series win overall in this uh, stage uh, of the racing. So uh, we've got one lap now. So Prince now uh, crossing the line with Kutlika close behind him in the B race. Uh, as we see Cooper uh, and uh, Collins there coming in in um, 11th and 12th place in the A's. So where are we in the women, the hand cycling and the paracycling? So um, the hand cycling, as you see there at the bottom, is um, the recumbent type of cycling. Um, for those riders who uh, who can't use their legs and uh, uh, riding in the recumbent position, uh, and then the paracycling there, uh, and we only have one rider I think in the paracycling. No, no, we've got two riders there. Sorry, again, it's my eyesight. I apologise. Um, and as we bring up, I'll I'll try and get the names uh, as we bring those up. Um, when we get to full screens and the women in the middle there. So we'll be crossing to them. We've still got plenty of racing there. They do a shorter uh, distance. Um, they do half the distance of the men's A and B race, but uh, we'll certainly pick those up um, as we go through. Uh, and I'll also try and give you some of the updates on who is uh, at the top of those standings um, as we go through there. So. Uh, Prince and Kutlika now with half a lap still to go. Half a lap for Prince and Kutlika. I think we're going to be, see a very, very similar finish to what we saw with uh, Jaeger uh, in, the, uh, in the A race. Uh, so Kutlika and Prince now not giving anything away not putting in too big an effort. A little bit of a gap now, and they're just about to hit this rise. So this will be where we see who's going to put in the first effort. And this time, will the first attacker be the one who wins? I tend to think that if you're the second attacker on a uh, course like this, you've got a target, uh, and all you need to is get past them. And then the first rider probably tends to mentally think, well, that's it, I've made my effort. Um, I'm not going to uh, be able to sustain it now so but we'll see what happens we'll see what happens Kutlika if I had to put money on it I'd put it on uh, Kutlika just because I've uh, seen him race and he seemed to be very strong and animated the race as we go through but uh, that could be the curse of the commentator so he's uh, got four or five meters a little bit of a gap there to Prince but nothing to worry about she gets closed very quickly and uh, nobody giving anything away they're not putting in any big efforts I think they're watching each other waiting to see what's going to happen they're uh, just uh, not ambling along, but doing three, three, that's a comfortable effort for both these riders. We get right onto the slope now, we're hitting the 6%, um, but nobody's putting in a massive effort. Who's going to be the first to really stand on the pedals and uh, put out some big red numbers? Only 200 meters left to go in the B and still nobody has made an effort. I'm, I'm oh, Prince now, Prince now is going, oh no, no. He's not putting in a sustained effort. That was a momentary red, but uh, Kutlika has reacted. Maybe that was what Prince wanted to make Kutlika react. Back off, Kutlika has reacted. He's now putting in over 10 watts per kilo and has, yep, just at the right time has hit that rise. I don't think Prince had the uh, big effort in. He made a little bit of an effort 
Um, Kudlika reacted very quickly and Prince had nothing to come back. So Kudlika there, great win for Kudlika, but well done Prince. Um, he uh, got bridged across to Kudlika when Kudlika made the attack um, and, uh, you know, didn't let him uh, have it all his own way, made some effort at the end to make Kudlika have to ride hard for the victory. So we're now seeing this uh, group of um, one, two, three, four, five riders uh, behind uh, with uh, Nelson, Chan, Harris, uh, the, the other Nelson and uh, Brock Hu. Uh, so we'll see if Brock Hu can, uh, uh, as I said, Brock Hu is our um, series leader. So Brock Hu will be looking for a good result, but Harris has put in the effort. Harris is getting across that crest first. Brock Hu right on his wheel, could still get past the line, but no, nope, he's going to be settled for third place. So Harris in third, Brock Hu in fourth, uh, Chan was in fifth, and we've got Nelson, uh, M. Nelson in uh, sixth, and R. Nelson in seventh. So that group finishing pretty much together um, with a little bit of effort there right at the end from Harest to take third place on the podium. So congratulations to them. Congratulations to Brock Hu, who I think will um, seal the series victory in the B race. So, uh, you know, it didn't need to do anything. He needed to finish up there, needed to finish in the points to make sure that uh, nobody who was, there was somebody close behind, Marion Hambrick, who I didn't see racing uh, today. And Borders was not far back too, but Borders uh, in the series, but Borders is quite some way back in, uh, I think, ninth place. We're going to see uh, Borders come back after Placido, who we're following here. So uh, definitely won't be overtaking Broku, but Borders, uh, I think, will be have done enough, possibly, uh, with Hambrick, if it's not racing, um, uh, enough to jump into second place. So well done to Brad Borders there. So who we're seeing now? We're seeing the women in the centre of the screen. So Anna Ronkainen there, um, who, and Kate Kate Ouellette. Uh, so two very strong uh, female riders there, and um, uh, Wittberg uh, in the front. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that uh, yeah. So Anna Ronkainen is the series leader, and Kate is not far behind Anna. So those are oh, Weisberg, Weisberg um, in first place, putting out some big power there going up six watts per kilo up the uh ah this is christian weisberg okay um not sure why we have christian weisberg in the women's race or maybe it's a maybe it's a um mistake of the um uh i i know that sometimes the avatars come up as uh, so i'm not uh, i know sometimes the avatars come up as um uh, as male riders, that's happened to my wife, who I've recently got onto RGT. Um, for some reason, we cannot get her avatar to be a woman rather than a man. But uh, um, we're going to stick with uh, Kate and Anna, who are definitely the series leader. And I'm not seeing Weisberg in uh, any of the other uh, riders. So perhaps that's a mistake um, of getting into this race. But anyway, we'll stick with it and, and we'll see what happens. And I'm sure that the uh, uh, RGT and Echelon uh, will sort it out afterwards. Whatever happens, it seems that uh, Kate and Anna have uh, let uh, Weisberg go, perhaps because uh, there is some sort of mistake. And so they won't be affected uh, by um, anything that Weisberg is doing in the race. And we'll certainly stick with them and see how they fight out this lap. So Kate there, Kate, uh, I know is an extremely fit rider, quite a light rider. Um, and uh, is certainly going to have a little bit of advantage over um, Anna on the constant climbing. But Anna is a very, very good track rider, I believe, um, is the Finnish women's Omnium, Omnium champion. Um, uh, I, in previous times, have organized quite a lot of uh, track style racing on RGT, and Anna was a regular uh, in the track races and uh, certainly held her own with uh, some of the top men was often finishing in uh, top 10 top five is very very good at the devil if you've ever seen devil race which is the uh, elimination uh, race that uh, is a favorite of track racing so uh, Anna is a um, I say Kate very different types of riders so Kate um, will have a good power to um, watts per kilo ratio um, being a very light rider but probably not as many outright watts. Anna would be able um, is, is a, um, a track rider. Track riders usually have bigger outright power um, are often a bit uh, heavier or more muscled than um, your typical road rider um, so it's a, a contrast of styles between these two. Anna 
will have bigger outright power, I suspect, and uh, cake will have better watts per kilo. So we'll see how they go uh, together. So there's the uh, confirmation of results there for the men's A. So Jaden Yeager um, in first place, Johan Nordland in second, and Greg Abbott rounds out the podium um, in third place. Um, uh, then we have Jamie Dumper in fourth, Mike Swart in fifth, Tolif Soli, seventh, the sixth, Brian Kellison, Jason Mount, Mike Lister, Gav Ash, John Cooper, Patrick Collins, and Federico Golino are our finishers so far. Interesting there that uh, Patrick Collins, uh, watts per kilo, 4.46, compared to the winner, um, doing only 4.03. In fact, uh, the highest watts per kilo is in 12th place. I mean, that, that can happen, I guess, if uh, he rode most of the race solo um, and had nobody to recover with and nobody to uh, sit on a wheel, then um, that's, that's what happens. Um, that's the effect of having a bit of uh, drafting and a bit of recovery uh, during the race. Um, so uh, we're now in the women's race with um, uh, Bono there uh, in fifth place. Coming up that little rise, gee, it looks, uh, you could see the, the cadence slowing down there. Cara Bono uh, in fifth place is uh, already nearly a whole lap down on uh, Kate and Anna in uh, front, uh, but not far behind Armani with the Italian flag. So um, could potentially get back together and uh, Giol um, in 90 meters further back on Bono. So uh, they could get together, we'll see, or maybe they'll end up riding uh, solo. So it'll be, you know, quite a, quite a hard, quite a hard race to do solo. Uh, Giol there in sixth place with the French flag there, putting in some uh, red numbers there. The red numbers, by the way, are not, um, uh, 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 it, it's not an independent thing, so the red numbers depend on your FTP, um, for those who aren't familiar with it. Um, your FTP is uh, your functional threshold power, which is... Uh, don't don't write in, because I know lots of people, it's always a, 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 sub, a controversial subject, but it's, it's essentially the power that you can hold for an hour. And uh, there we see Shelley Nevin there in uh, seventh place uh, with the US flag, uh, also grinding up this little uh, rise. So yeah, functional threshold power, it's the power basically that you can hold for uh, an hour. Um, and uh, the way IGT works is those little uh, colored bars beneath the name um, or next to your name um, are a function of what power you're putting out, well, what's per kilo you're putting out relative to your weight and your FTP. So if your FTP was say um, 240 watts and your weight was uh, 60 kilos, then your FTP benchmark would be four watts per kilo. So it would show as uh, sort of yellow about this sort of power when you're doing around your watts, around your FTP. So if you're doing four watts per kilo, it would be showing um, as yellow and uh, going a little bit up into orange. And as you go higher, it goes into orange when you're at, uh, at VO2, so just above threshold. Um, and then red when you're in the anaerobic, the sort of sprinting. Um, levels. So that's how it works. And then below that, green is tempo, um, and the uh, blues are sort of the endurance and uh, recovery. So uh, we're now seeing what are we seeing? Three screens now. We've got the women in the top left corner. Uh, we've got the hand cycling. It looks like we've got a, a pair out in front in the hand cycling. Cover line in there in, with the Finnish flag, and uh, a Kuman, I think, uh, with the um, Dutch flag. Uh, another Finnish rider a couple of hundred meters back in the hand cycling. So uh, these pair look like they're going to be riding together. They've got each other's measure. They've still, they've got uh, seven kilometers down with 10 kilometers still remaining. So uh, it looks like we have a very similar to our previous races, a pair who are going to uh, take it away, uh, work together and maintain their gap to the rest of the field. So they're coming up to this, uh, I'm pretty sure this is the finish line rise um, with, it was very, very shortly ago, a 300 meter, but that gap comes down very quickly as they hit the rise, but they'll maintain that going up um, about 120 meters, 100 meters back to uh, Arte in uh, third place. So Kuman there 
and uh, Kovalainen um, with their staying out together as we come up this little rise. Uh, and I believe the H3 is their, their uh, classification. Um, uh, if you're um, familiar with um, paracycling and um, uh, the various forms of um, cycling for people with uh, injuries and disabilities, there are classifications depending on what type of um, uh, disability or what type of, um, uh, yeah, depending on the restrictions that you have in your cycling. Um, uh, I mean, if I, I don't know off the top of my head what, how they're all defined, but that will be what the uh, H3 is in the name as we come through. Fourth place now uh, is uh, A. Parker, I'm guessing, um, in um, uh, crossing the line now with six kilometres down and 11.8 kilometres still remaining in fourth place. So ooh, nearly a lap down on the front three riders from first to fourth. Uh, now we have in fifth place, uh, Costa there um, with a slightly different classification there uh, in fifth place. Uh, is also, yep, on this very difficult climb. And the climbing, I believe, with the recumbents is, is, is the harder bit. Um, they can often do very good power and speed um, on the flats and the descents, but uh, climbing is where they really do suffer in terms of um, a speed penalty uh, and they have to put in a uh, you know, big effort uh, to go climbing up these hills. One of my uh, friends actually in my club of Dulwich is uh, also a hand cyclist who rides with the GB national team uh, and, um, uh, and uh, yeah, Alex Brook Turner and uh, he did the, if you're familiar with um, uh, Mont Ventoux um, in, uh, in France, one of the classic climbs of the Tour de France, there is a thing you can do of doing the triple ascent of Mont Ventoux. There are three ways up Mont Ventoux and even for, 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 um, for fully abled riders, it's, it's a classic thing to do. I mean, very few people successfully do it, uh, to do three ascents and to do it uh, with a hand cycle. It's just absolutely amazing. And he wrote a fantastic article for our club magazine on his triple ascent of Mont Ventoux. So uh, we're in the paracycling uh, race now with um, uh, Bereni, uh, the American flag there, uh, and putting out some good power there, four watts per kilo, coming up to this little finish rise, uh, nearly nearly 10 kilometers down for Bereni with, uh, so he's over halfway uh, through this race. Um, but uh, no uh, competitive Kilgore was on the line, certainly, um, but doesn't appear to be riding. I don't know whether that's because of a technical problem um, or, or some other issue that's uh, affected him during the ride. So uh, Berenyi is uh, going to be our winner by default, but uh, not taking it easy. He's uh, certainly putting in some red numbers. Um, if uh, nothing else would be a good thing to treat it as a training exercise. Uh, most of these uh, riders will probably be competing, um, probably be uh, going into um, uh, other races uh, and events, possibly at uh, regional or even national level. Uh, so uh, it's a good thing up, oh, a bit of a wave for brand new there. Thanks. Yep. Wave as he went through the finish line. Uh, maybe he's listening. Um, I, I'm, this has been broadcast on um, ZMS Facebook page. So if you are watching on the Facebook page or listening, um, give us a shout. Uh, we can bring up the Facebook messages. If you have any questions, I'll, uh, well, if I can answer them, I will. Uh, <laughs> no guarantees. Um, or just give us a shout and uh, say hello um, to let us know that you're uh, appreciating the coverage or give some encouragement to some of the riders. A lot of the riders uh, listen to the um, broadcasts as they ride um, and uh, quite a few of them will go back and watch it afterwards to see how the race played out, which you don't always get a sense of when you're in the race. So um, if you're following one of the riders uh, or you're just following the races and want to give some encouragement to these fantastic riders, then uh, give us a shout. So, where are we? The women's race, they do the uh, same distance, I think, as the men. So they're coming through the finish line now, um, 12, so six laps down with the uh, women uh, and 22 kilometers still to go for Anna and Kate. And putting out uh, decent uh, power, the three and a half, four watts per kilo as they crest the rise, uh, going past Armani there. 
uh, and Anna and Kate looked like uh, very similar to the to uh, Prince and Kudlika and uh, Jaeger and Nordland on the um, previous races. They formed a little pair. They're going to stay together. No sense in trying to attack uh, the pair that you're riding with unless you really think you can get away with it. But uh, especially if you fancy yourself in a sprint, I think out of this pair that Anna would be the one who would fancy herself in a sprint, given her track background. Not everyone on track has a great sprint, but uh, Anna, I think, has a pretty good sprint. Um, you don't get to be Omnium champion of anywhere without having a decent sprint. So uh, if, if Kate wants to uh, get something out of this race, and she has, in the series, Kate has 877 points, and Anna has 950. Um, so there's only 10 points difference between first and second. So. Um, unless uh, Anna has a particular disaster, um, it's unlikely that she's going to overtake her. But, uh, but you know, um, it would be nice for Kate to win one of the races. Anna has taken out uh, a few wins, but I, don't, I think Kate's second has been her best result. So if, Anna, if Kate wants to do that, she's going to need to drop Anna sometime before the finish and make sure she goes to finish alone. That's, that's my guess anyway. We're seeing now the uh, confirmation in the men's B. So Hakan Kutluka. Um, uh, finishing there in first place. Uh, Jonathan Prince in second. They came to the line as we saw uh, together with uh, Hakan managing to put in the power just at the right time. Uh, Terence Harest in third place rounding out the podium. And um, they were about a lap and a half down on the men. So we're, sorry, they were about a lap and a half down on the men's A. And uh, so we're seeing, uh, you know, we saw the men mostly over four watts per kilo in the, sorry, we saw the A race mostly over four watts per kilo. We're seeing the B race at uh, sort of 3.6 to 3.2 uh, on the podium there. Uh, David Brocou, our, our uh, series uh, leader and series winner, I believe going into this race. So uh, he finished there just off the podium in fourth place, but enough to secure um, his spot. Albert Chan in fifth, uh, Morin Nelson in sixth, uh, Richard Nelson in seven. So those uh, four riders there, Broku, Chan, Moran Nelson and Richard Nelson all finished together in a nice little bunch. Albert Chan, wow, very efficient riding there from uh, Albert, 2.87 watts per kilo. Um, he, not quite, but certainly the lowest of those top riders. Uh, so he was playing it very clever and uh, getting in the draft and getting in the wheels to make sure that he didn't do more than he had to. Uh, my first rule. Uh, then going down to eighth place, Yao Placido, um, who's the Portuguese rider. Brad Borders, um, who I've, uh, I've closed the thing, but Brad, I think if I remember correctly, was in third place um, in the series. So well done to Brad. Uh, Doug Hackleton has also been regularly doing some of these riding. So uh, well done to Doug. Doug uh, and, and well done to Doug too for that little effort that he made uh, during the race to catch up um, with that bunch, even though he ended up being dropped and I think being overtaken by a couple of riders, but it's good to see people putting in efforts during the race. Andrew Billing in 11th, Gary Little, uh, Brennan Nelson in 13th, Francisco Aponte. We didn't see much of these riders during the race because obviously we were following the front. Um, uh, and they're about, uh, what's that, about eight laps, sorry, eight minutes down on the, the front riders. Harry Roberts in 15th, Nicholas Mutis 16th, Kerry Tyler 17th, Tyler Redcock in 18, Danielle, Daniele Brumana uh, in 19th, and Mark Helfenstein in 20th place, 15 minutes back on our leaders. So well done to uh, all those riders who took part in the men's B race. We certainly had two very good races in the men's A and the men's B race. And um, we're having very good races here with the, uh, the women, the paracycling and the hand cycling. So, uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, amazing how um, these races are mirroring each other with pairs breaking away and riding strongly and seemingly happy to stay together and fight it out at the end. Well, a bit early to say in the women's race, but certainly in the hand cycling on the bottom left of the screen there, Kovalainen and Kuman seem to have each other's measure and uh, they're just... Um, sticking it out together so they're both now in that yellow orange zone which means they're around threshold so that's for them 
2.5. What's their cumin orange at 2.5? So, guessing that uh, threshold there, Kovalainen and they're putting in some uh, red. They very quickly go into the the red there, but it uh, looks like their threshold is about 2.4, 2.5 uh, watts per kilo when they're in the uh, yellow orange zone. But three over three is red for them, um, and that's not surprising. That's that nine ten percent. Uh, part of the uh, slope. So 9 or 10 percent is a pretty steep gradient, certainly very steep for a hand cycle. And they're having to put in a big effort every time they come across this little rise up to the finish line. So uh, maybe a bit of practice. They've got three laps to go. So Kumin there uh, hitting the rise just ahead of Kovalainen, who now comes ahead. And uh, Kumin will be able to pick up the draft behind Kovalainen. Uh, it seems to be the way. Kovalainen seems very happy to sit on the pace um, that he's comfortable with, do his own race, and Kuman uh, getting the advantage of being behind. Um, to be honest, never having tried this, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously there is some um, aerodynamic advantage. I'm not sure, given the lower profile of the recumbents, um, whether it's exactly the same aerodynamics. Um, if uh, anybody is uh, watching on Facebook and knows how the aerodynamics work, um, in terms of I mean, the, the number that's often um, talked about with upright bikes uh, is um, 30 to, you know, about a third, 30 to 40 percent uh, that you save in terms of um, aerodynamics being behind somebody. Um, I'd be interested to know whether that's the same in the hand cycling. Um, so uh, we're coming up now with uh, Arte, um, another Finnish rider. Uh, who is um, yeah, only about 400 and yeah, by the time we cross the line, going to be about 500 metres, a bit over 500 metres behind Kovalainen and, uh, and Kuman, but uh, a very comfortable gap of uh, a full lap back um, between third and fourth. So, uh, probably Arte not able, I guess, to quite keep up with uh, Kovalainen and, and Kuman, but will ride to his own race uh, and keep a steady power. Um, to finish the race and uh, almost certainly take out third place. So we saw Parker there crossing the line uh, in fourth place and now we're skipping back to uh, Costa uh, in fifth who is uh, another half a lap back uh, behind Parker and uh, two laps behind Kovalainen and, and Kunin. And uh, here we have Drosky, um, an H4 rider in sixth place who's maybe having some technical difficulties because he's going to zero there although his avatar is still moving but uh, although maybe he's given that he's stopped on the steepest part of the climb maybe just finding that uh, now he's you know over nearly three laps down uh, finding it difficult no he's picked up again so could be could be connection difficulties um, could just be difficulty in, in terms of effort um, you know as I said it's an eight to ten percent climb up here uh, not easy for anyone, let alone doing it by hand. So Drosky there safely crests that rise, has picked up the power again, um, and will continue around with five laps to go uh, for Drosky. Hopefully not with a technical problem, maybe he just needed to, to make some adjustment um, uh, to his bike or to himself um, in uh, real life, and uh, was just pausing there. Hopefully we'll be able to continue and finish the race. And uh, we're seeing Vereni now um, keeping up a good effort in the top right. Um, unfortunately, nobody to race against, but uh, not letting that stop him. Um, he's uh, there wearing the Stages, uh, stages Cycling Kit. Uh, not sure if he's on a Stages Trainer, but who knows. Um, so, yeah, putting in a good effort there. Five watts per kilo going up this climb. Um, so he's certainly... Even though there is nobody there, he's uh, acting as if there is and uh, making it a good training effort. So uh, you know, that's, that's always a good mental thing to do and a hard mental thing to do if you haven't got anybody riding against you. But uh, well done to Berenyi for uh, keeping up the effort and not just uh, rolling around. And you know, why not? He's made the effort to come and join the race, set up his equipment and get everything ready. So you want to get something out of it uh, while you're doing it. So uh, Berenyi there has on now on his last lap. So uh, he's got uh, just under 
two kilometers to go. He's done um, 16, so he will be on his last lap, which I think means we must be, yeah, the hand cycling still has two laps to go. So two laps to go in the hand cycling. And I think the uh, women have just crossed the finish line as well um, uh, with eight laps to go. So Kate and Anna, uh, no, they're just about to cross the finish line. So I was slightly premature. So Kate and Anna uh, still uh, keeping their lead by quite some distance. Uh, I think they're over a lap now back to uh, the rider behind them. Um, so they will keep tapping it out and marking each other as we go around this course, making sure that uh, none get away. So it'll be interesting to see what Kate um, is doing. I'm just having a quick look through some of the races to see how much Kate and Anna have actually raced each other. So there was a race, the Tour of the Gilles, no, that was, that was the Tulsa Tough race. So Tulsa Tough, Anna won the race and it looks like Kate is in third place uh, in that event. And similarly, the Intelligentsia Cup, which was only last week, uh, Anna won the race and Kate was second. So. So they have raced a couple of times against each other in fairly recent weeks. So Kate will know from the look of those two races, um, it looks uh, exactly as I thought, that Anna has the beating of Kate uh, in a sprint. Um, I don't know, I haven't seen the actual races to see whether they came to the line together, but, um, but that would be my guess, knowing Anna's profile, um, that uh, Anna has the beating of Kate in a sprint. Kate does actually ultra endurance events, and Kate is an absolutely amazing uh, rider, I think. I, I think. Um, uh, apologies if this is incorrect, Kate, but I think from reading your stuff on Facebook, so Kate, Kate is very active on uh, the RGT Facebook pages. Um, that Kate is, I think, a fairly recent convert to cycling, um, but is extremely fit, um, has a uh, you know, very active, fit lifestyle, and um, a few years ago converted to well, took up cycling uh, in a big way. Um, and has been doing some uh, ultra endurance, like you know, like things like, like Ride Across America. She did a virtual uh, version of Ride Across America uh, last year, and uh, I think has been training for some other ultra endurance races. So those are the ones where you ride for literally days on end, and you just have to keep a, you have to be ultra fit. You have to keep out steady power. Uh, whereas Anna is much more specialist in the short type of racing. So here we're going down to the paracycling. We've got Berenyi coming up to the line. He's not going to have anybody to sprint against, but he is going to honour the race uh, and respect the jersey with a nice little sprint coming up this uh, rise, putting in a good five watts per kilo uh, with 160 metres go, gets out of the saddle there virtually and uh, possibly in real life as well. Um, coming up to the line now with 100 meters to go putting in a big effort hopefully he might give us a wave or a victory salute as he crosses the line so well done to Berenyi for uh, keeping going um, despite having no competition thank you yes a wave as we cross the line well done yeah great ride um, and yeah unfortunate to not have any competition but uh, but you know we could see that he was definitely putting in um, a big effort uh, in the right parts of the race so uh, probably not that much different to uh, if he'd have had someone pushing him uh, around the course and hopefully got uh, some good training uh, effort out of it. So uh, well done to Berenyi there uh, in the paracycling. Uh, and now we can cross, I think, back to the hand cycling, which I think we probably should cross back to as we come up to this up. This, uh, Kate and them going across the line. So Kuman and Kovalainen coming up this rise now for the last time on their laps. They're just about to lap uh, Drosky, who we saw um, having some, uh, well, we're not sure if it's technical difficulties or physical difficulties coming up, or you know, effort difficulties coming up this uh, effort. Um, it's certainly a big climb. Kuman now putting in a little bit of a gap. Could this be an effort by Kuman to uh, distance Kovalainen. I'm going to try and bring up the uh, results to see where the Kuman and Kovalainen have been racing together. So um, I'm not seeing them on the... Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing them previously uh, in any of the races. Um, but maybe I'm... Look oh no, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. So uh, so that was Bremery. Let me bring up the other, sorry, the hand cycling. So Kuman now putting in, he's got 20 metres on Kovalainen as we get to the top. That will quickly extend 
uh, with one lap to go. So this could be Kuman's effort to distance Kovalainen uh, and uh, make sure he goes to the line uh, alone. So yeah, I'm looking at the series results here of uh, Kuman. Kuman is actually the series leader. Um, has won one, two, three, four, five, six races. So uh, a very strong uh, rider. Um, Kovalainen, I do not see. Yeah, I'm looking um, Kovalainen, I'm not seeing the name uh, in any previous races. So this could be Kovalainen's first race in the series. Apologies if I've got that wrong, but that's what my screen is telling me. Um, so uh, possibly an unknown quantity. So Kuman may be taking the uh, safe, F, safe uh, route here and thinking, well, I don't know this rider. Um, I'm going to distance him and uh, make sure that I go to the line alone. What better way to win a race? Um, although it's entirely possible they do. Uh, and, you know, it's it's a it's a, a, a small bike racing in general is a small world and uh, hand cycling. Um, I think particularly at the top level, uh, a lot of the riders do tend to know each other. They bump into each other at uh, training and events and so on. Um, so uh, possibly, possibly they are known to each other, but uh, but not in this series. So Kuman now has taken the chance of that little rise to put in a, a nice attack, uh, and is keeping a good power. He's keeping at 2.5. He said that that was probably about the threshold uh, for Kuman. So uh, he's not letting up. Kovalainen has dropped back a little bit, although we are going down this hill. So taking a little bit of recovery. Um, to see if he can maybe put in effort. But that gap has very quickly gone out to 80, 90 metres with uh, only one uh, kilometre left to, to go. So it looks like Kuman has put in uh, an attack at exactly the right time uh, and is going to consolidate his string of victories with yet another victory. Um, and... Uh, take the series win very decisively. Kuman is on uh, 1,780 points ahead of uh, Jones, who I don't think is racing today, on 1,490. Um, Parker on 710. Um, Arte, who we see uh, on our screen there in third place, is in fourth place overall. So uh, Kovalainen and Kuman now with 500 metres to go. Coming up this rise again for the last time. The gap has come down to 20 metres. Could Kovalainen take it back? 500 metres to go. Kovalainen putting in over three watts per kilo. So maybe Kuman has, uh, well, we'll see if Kuman has kept anything uh, for the end because they've still got another 200 or 350 metres of this uh, rise to go before they get to that final little plateau ahead of the finish. Kuman keeping it steady, two and a half watts per kilo. Kovalainen was putting in some big uh, numbers there of three, but there's a little bit of a, they're back, the, the, the gradient is back to sort of plus one, so uh, nearly flat, and then it, it comes up again. So maybe Kovalainen just taking a little bit of recovery. 20 meters, that is doable. It's absolutely doable if Kovalainen has the effort left uh, in his arms as we go up this final rise so 25 meters this is a thrilling finish in the hand cycling kuman going they're both going into the red similar numbers 3.1 for kuman uh th can't talk, say 3.2 for kovalainen nobody's giving up here they're fighting it out to the end so it was probably very wise of kuman to get that little gap if he was together with kovalainen um i suspect kovalainen would have gone past him um, if they'd have come to this rise together. So Kovalainen is definitely gaining ground on Kuman here. It's gone back to under 20 metres, but no, Kuman kicks again. Kuman kicks again with over three watts per kilo. He waited until Kovalainen was within 20 metres, but has kicked again, I think, at exactly the right time. He will make it to that. There he, we see him just get to that crest. We've got 80 metres to go. Kovalainen is not going to make up that ground in that last as he gets to Kuman get to the flat before so uh, wow what a great finish that was from Kuman and Kovalainen uh, and a great effort from Kovalainen to try and uh, get that ground back as they hit that final rise um, certainly gave it uh, everything that he had but not enough to take it back and uh, Arte there the other Finnish rider um, is uh, oh wow we're seeing some movement in the um, women's race as well we'll just uh, finish with Arte going across the line 
Uh, here's no, no, we're going to go to the, we're going to have both screens. Okay, so Arte there on uh, your right, on third place. But what we see in the women's race is Kate has made her move with still with 10 kilometers to go, but Kate absolutely has the endurance to keep it going. She'll know what power she can sit on for the next 10 kilometers. And Kate has made her move on Anna to try and get away as we come up this little climb uh, to the finish with uh, five laps. So uh, last time we saw them, they had six laps to go. So sometime in that lap, Kate has made a move. Uh, very sensible of Kate to try and distance Anna and make sure she gets to the line without Anna to contend with. So it's still only 150 to 160 meters. Kate going into the red there as she gets to the crest of the finish uh, rise, the rise up to the finish. Um, she'll now go across a very similar sort of place to where Ate is. Um, but uh, Anna will be, yeah, by the time Anna gets to the top, that gap will be 200 to 300 metres. So uh, Kate has a good handy lead over uh, Anna Ronkainen uh, as we hit five laps to go. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Kate, as I said, being an ultra endurance rider, uh, and also, as I say, being very, um, actually very into, you know, diet and, um, um, and other things um, in terms of her lifestyle, Kate. So she's very in tune with her body is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, always paying attention to uh, what she's eating, what she's doing, how she's training. So um, Kate, more than most people, would have a very good sense of what she can keep doing for the rest of the race. So um, it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully she's paced it and be able to get it going. So we're going to cross back now to the hand cycling um, with Ate uh, coming up with 100, just over 100 metres to go, just about to hit the crest of that finish rise and uh, cross the line in third place. Uh, and that's a great effort from uh, Mika Ate there, who's in fourth place overall in the series. Um, it was distanced fairly early on by Kuman and Kovalainen, but didn't uh, fade away, um, kept the gap to about 500, 600 meters for the whole race, and we'll cross the line in third place. Good effort there from uh, Mika Arte. So uh, we had um, uh, a Dutch uh, on in the first place and uh, a finish two and three on the podium. Uh, as we see, um, uh, was it Parker there, I think, in fourth place with still a lap to go. So, uh, Kate Boulette. Do you know, I've, I've seen Kate's name so many times on Facebook and on RGT, I'm not actually sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, uh, Kate, somebody who knows Kate or Kate herself can tell me if I'm uh, getting it wrong, but that's what I'm going for for now. Um, not even sure where it's from, Boulette. Um, so it sounds French, uh, so I thought for a while, for, but uh, it might be French Canadian, who knows? Um, but she's got the American flag uh, and is riding very strongly uh, with um, four, four and a half laps to go uh, in the women's. And there's Anna not giving up behind her, but the gap has gone out to 600 meters as Anna comes down this little uh, descent on a 4% uh, downward slope there, getting a bit of recovery. You can see her numbers now, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, uh, just putting out some, uh, you know, just, just turning over, glass pedaling, as we say in real life, just turning over the pedals. Um, well, there's a good thing, you always, um, it's one of the thing, other things that you notice pros and, and elite riders, um, very rarely don't coast as much. It's one of the big differences between pros and amateurs. Amateurs tend to coast a lot, free wheel a lot, free, and, uh, stop pedaling, pros pros always pedal. Um, pros keep pedaling a lot because uh, if they need to, the teeth within the uh, hub um, engage much more quickly if you're already um, if you're already pedaling. Uh, here we see, um, is it Cara Bono um, in fourth place now? Um, quite some way back, uh, that's nearly two, yep, she's just about to be overtaken by Kate, I think. Um, so that's a, a two lap, yep. So Cara now coming up to the finish line. She has um, just under six laps to go um, in fourth place and will be shortly overtaken by Kate um, with uh, two laps um, ahead. Uh, and here we have, um, we saw Armani, then we saw Dora um, in sixth place. Uh, still putting in a good effort, Eva Maria Dora uh, with the German flag. 
there um, cresting that uh, little rise. She's been through the finish line uh, and is now on the downward, uh, the downward um, descent. I say descent. I don't. I'm only hesitating about saying descent because I, I think descent is like a mountain. It's a it's a it's a downward incline uh, on a on a course like this because they're only short and they're not particularly steep. Um, but uh, it's definitely down and it's definitely a place to get a bit of recovery. So here is our rider out the front, um, of Iceberg. Um, I say we're not sh quite sure what the story is with uh, Weisberg, but uh, at least on the road um, has uh, a lead. Um, Kate um, Ouellette there in second place and second place in the series. And uh, yeah, just tapping it, uh, tapping it out. Steady three, three and a half watts per kilo for Kate. Uh, and she'll keep doing that as uh, Cara Bono has, has latched onto Kate's wheel. Very sensible from Cara there. Um, she's quite some way down. She's no threat to Kate. So if she can stay on her wheel, particularly on these uh, downward sections, um, get a bit of extra recovery, get a bit of extra speed. Um, and uh, even though it might not make any difference in terms of placing, it means that she finishes a bit faster, saves a bit more energy. Um, and can recover more quickly afterwards. And that's what it's all about. So we're now looking at um, uh, Parker here, Austin Parker, uh, who is uh, saying the MH3 category, uh, uh, sorry, the H3 category, um, and uh, is finishing in fourth place in the hand cycling with 600 meters to go. Um, that 600 meters is the final climb. So it's not an easy 600 meters. Uh, but uh, but uh, Austin Parker will take it up the little rise. Is now on the five six percent slope. Has a little bit of eight to ten percent still to come. So uh, not finished yet by some distance or some pain uh, still to come uh, as he comes to finish in fourth place. And uh, Parker was in third place. Austin Parker was in third place uh, overall. Um, in the series on 710 points, um, quite some distance behind uh, second place, but uh, we'll finish we'll finish in third place over the series. Arte was um, in fourth place, but not enough to overtake Parker. So well done uh, to Parker, uh, who has done uh, one, two, three, four races before this and uh, seems to have had a, a couple of thirds, uh, three thirds and a fourth place finish. So uh, good, consistent racing from Austin Parker there and will be rewarded with a third place podium um, for the series and a fourth place for today. So 200, just under 300 meters now for uh, Austin Parker. Um, the, the hardest part of this little course uh, as it comes up to try to get that, that rise, that crest just before the finish is with about 80, 90 meters to go so he's still got uh, just about 150 meters of climbing six percent I think we'll see it kick up to eight uh, percent uh, just in a few meters so it's the hardest part still to go but he's going to keep pushing it up here we're seeing him uh, doing yeah steady power so 1.5 um, I didn't get a sense before of what Parker's FTP sort of threshold power was, but uh, he's in the green, which means tempo. Tempo is uh, sort of 80%, uh, 85% um, of FTP um, going into, yeah, just from green into yellow there. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a decent effort. It's sort of effort you can do for fairly long periods of time, um, slightly above endurance pace, but uh, sort of between yeah, endurance and sweet spot sort of pace, I guess you would say. Uh, and he will keep it going. Uh, as we've seen all these riders do, even if they're riding alone, they keep it going to the line. Um, why not? That's what racing is all about. It's drilled into you as a racer that uh, you don't want to coast across the line. You always make a bit of an effort for the people who are standing on the line, jeering, taking photos uh, and so on. So Parker now with just a few meters of climbing still to go nearly at that crest just about to hit it right now we'll see that slope go very quickly immediately down to zero speed picks up 
from uh, 13, 14 kilometers up to 20 kilometers an hour, over 20 kilometers, 25, as he is about to coast, across, not coast, about to uh, wheel across the line in fourth place. Well done to Austin Parker. And now we're back lap to Costa and we'll uh, keep him on the split screen there, but we'll pick him up as he certainly pick him up as he crosses the line uh, coming back into, uh, yeah, once he's completed another lap. So uh, looks like uh, quite a big gap has come out from uh, Kate to Anna. Um, it's got big very quickly. Um, what was it? It was, yeah, it was about four and a half kilometers ago that we uh, we saw Kate breaking away. But uh, in that space of time, the gap has gone out from uh, a few hundred meters the last time we saw to uh, 1.4 kilometers. So Anna has really, really eased off here. Um, she's, uh, you can see the numbers there. Um, she's sort of doing a steady, Kate, uh, sorry, Anna, I mean, behind is doing two and three, whereas Kate is doing, you know, four watts per kilo as we come up this little rise. So um, Kate has put the hammer down at exactly the right moment. So great tactics, Kate. Um, she obviously learned from her previous uh, brushes with Anna not to take Anna to the line um, uh, as I uh, said earlier and uh, has done exactly that she's put in a good move from a fair way out where Anna would be probably thinking that's a bit much for her to be able to uh, a bit much for not being a, an endurance type of rider um, Anna would have been thinking that's a bit early for a move for her um, whereas for Kate being an ultra endurance rider it was absolutely the perfect time so uh, Kate now with the Team Lou jersey uh, on her back. Kate uh, rides, can be found pretty much riding every weekend. I guess not, not today, but uh, I would be willing to bet she'll be there tomorrow. Team Lou, um, Lou Ricks uh, is a very long-term um, RGT rider and organizer and organizes one of the best attended group rides on Sunday afternoons. They're at um, three o'clock UK time, which uh, I think might be 10 or 11 o'clock, depending on where you are in the US. Um, and uh, it's a very great, it's a great place. Often when people come to IGT uh, and say, where do I start? Then lose, lose ride uh, on the weekends is the place that they get appointed to because uh, it has some fast riders who uh, do it as a not official race, but do a, a pretty hard ride up front but uh, then has big groups in the middle and at the back and nobody is left alone in uh, Team Lou in the uh, Team Lou rides. And uh, so it's a great place for new riders who are still trying to work out how the draft works, work out how you know they ride on RGT um, and so on. Um, and uh, you know, some riders who just aren't as fit or are only new to it. Um, so everybody makes sure that nobody is left alone uh, on the Team Lou ride. So uh, it's, it's why it's often a place where people get pointed to start. So Kate very proudly wearing the Team Lou jersey there, because I know Kate does uh, the Team Lou rides uh, very often. So uh, Anna there uh, in her Pactimo jersey uh, is uh, coming up on that rise, but uh, is um, over half a lap down on Kate. So I think Anna is just going to, uh, again, take it steady. Um, she's in no danger from Cara Bono, um, who is um, nearly two laps further down on Anna. So uh, Anna is perfectly safe uh, in that place behind Kate. She's uh, safe in terms of the series because she had uh, a lead over Kate coming into this final race. So, um, you know, that's, that's sensible. Um, as I said, why, you know, don't do anything you don't have to. Um, although I know Anna is a very competitive rider, so I'm sure if she had the chance, even though she doesn't need to win this race, that she would absolutely be trying to win um, and will um, uh, would certainly have given Kate, uh, if, if, if the tactics had played out differently, um, Anna would certainly be competing uh, for the win today, but uh, Kate has made sure that that's not going to happen. So we're now back to fourth place. Um, with uh, Cara Bonneau, um, who is uh, out on her own. Um, Armani about 500 meters behind. And uh, Anna over a lap and a half ahead. So Cara 
Um, again, not really any any uh, going to make much difference in terms of placings, but uh, is just going to keep make sure that she keeps riding um, and uh, finish the race strongly and finish the race uh, in a way that she's that, that she's happy with. That's what you have to come away with uh, from a race to make sure that you've left everything out there that you haven't done anything that um you know you, you've, you've done everything you thought you could to to get your best results and uh not left anything um out there you know don't as I say don't come away with any questions um so we're going to go back to the split screen now we've got Cara Bono on the left and we've got Costa there um I'm just trying to see in my results if I can see his first name no I don't think Costa has done any of the previous uh, right, it's not on my list anyway. So Costa there, um, uh, one of the first time riders in this series, um, but uh, is finishing there in fifth place, has uh, just under a kilometer to go, and it's that hardest five or 600 meters um, of the climb. And after Costa, it would just be Drosky. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it would just be Drosky to finish. Oh, need to uh, it's so difficult when you don't have a co-commentator. You don't get a moment to go and have a sip of tea or a drink. But uh, I've got my uh, water bottle from earlier when I was doing my own ride on RGT earlier today. So we have the women on the left and we have Costa now grinding up that 5% slope. Not easy going, very much not easy going on a hand cycle. Uh, here's Weisberg at the uh, front of the women's race has um, not a massive gap. I mean, it's a kilometer. So it's not a gap that's going to be um, beaten. Um, so, but uh, Kate has managed to keep that. So Christian Weisberg, um, again, we're not sure uh, about why that's a men's avatar. It could be that it's somehow um, a male rider in the race, but um, I'm not, I'll leave that to the commissaires and the judges um, afterwards. Could just be a visual mistake, but has 250 meters to go. Now, as we come up to the finish, so we're going to uh, watch um, Riceberg cross the line and is just going to lap Armani again uh, uh, just before that little rise coming up to the line. So 180 meters to go, about 100 meters of climbing, putting in a good effort there, four pipe watts per kilo. Um, certainly not as much as you would need to do for a sprint finish, but uh, making sure that uh, he's uh, putting in some effort, or she's putting in, a bit, in some effort um, as we come up to the finish and will be the first to cross the line in the women's race. 60 meters to go now, putting down a bit of power. Victory salute if they uh, know how to do it or at least a wave, but we'll see. So there we go, Weisberg now crossing the line, which means Kate not far behind, only um, 400, less than 500 meters to go for Kate. So we're going to watch Kate come across the line. Oh, Costa there, really, really struggling coming up this, this slope. The avatar looked like it stopped moving for a while there. Um, but come on, come on, Costa, this is the last one. This is the last one you have to do. So 300 meters left making all that effort coming up that um so many times eight eight nine times before eight times before um one more to go and i'm sure coaster has it in in him to be able to sorry her her sorry the f um sorry i hadn't noticed that before um i think means a female rider so uh, apologies for um misgendering there um so uh yeah coaster there um coming up and uh will come across in fifth place as kate now on the left um coming up uh, second across the line, but uh, we'll see what happens in the women's racing. So Kate made a great move, 10 kilometers out, dropped Anna, made sure that she didn't take Anna, who is a great sprinter to the line, and that has paid off brilliantly for Kate. Well done, Kate, using her ultra endurance skills uh, to cross the line in second, in second over the line there, and ahead of Anna, her big rival in the series by quite some distance, another 1.6 kilometers further back. So that was a really decisive move that Kate made in the women's race that uh, saw Anna off, made sure that uh, Anna was not going to be on Kate's wheel uh, crossing the line. But Anna is a great competitor and uh, it's great to see her um, racing on RGT. And um, as I say, she often does some of the track cycling um, and has been doing quite a lot of these races uh, as well, um, and I'm guessing in Finland, it's uh, 
certainly over winter, um, uh, indoor riding is very much the thing to do. So we are with Coaster there, um, 120, so just another 30 meters to go before she can cross the line, or not cross the line, before she can uh, relax a little bit um, and uh, the speed will pick up and that will be all the effort done for uh, Coaster there in the, um, yeah, so um, FH0, so H0 I guess is the, oh sorry, yeah, I, am, I don't know how I didn't see that, Holly Coaster. Um, Sorry, I, I don't know why I didn't see that. I am now looking at the list and I see that Holly has done some of the previous races. Um, is in eighth place overall uh, and did the previous two races, the Tulsa Tough and the Intelligentsia Cup um, with 170, 175, which means similar sort of finishes, fourth and fifth, I think, place finishes. So well done to Holly for doing those previous races and finishing fifth in uh, in this race. Um, don't know why I didn't see that name before, but uh, obviously I'm not looking in the right, difficult with all the screens up, but uh, well done, Holly. Crossing the line in fifth place there. And uh, Drosky now, uh, last rider, H4 category, um, with 600 meters to go. And that will be our last of the hand cycling races crossing the line. So he's just about to hit that uh, that uh, climb, that last five, six hundred meters crossing, uh, getting up to the finish. So we're seeing Anna now, she's uh, just a little bit ahead of where uh, Drosky is virtually, um, with 300, just under 300 meters to go. So uh, another 150, 600, 160 meters to go um, to get to the top of that crest, and we'll then cross the line uh, third across the line in the women's, second behind. Kate Bullett, but enough to guarantee that uh, Anna will triumph in the women's series. So well done, Anna. She's had a great series. She's had uh, one, two, three wins. Um, it looks like a third and a fourth. Um, that's uh, great going. So two wins, two wins on the trot. The last two weeks, uh, Anna has been the winner um, with Kate in third and Kate second. So that's. Uh, turned around for the final uh, obviously Kate as I said learned how to uh, pick Anna's pocket and make sure she didn't uh, come to the line with her so Anna now 80 minutes to go will cross the line and guarantee her top place in the series and third place on today's stage subject to any uh, post race changes as Dora now flashes past us uh, still finishing. So Drosky here 300 meters to go so come on similar I think the part of the problem here is because the um, the hand cyclists don't put out the same power that um, uh, that uh, the upright cyclists will do um, the algorithms the um, what happens in the virtual cycling is once you get below a certain power, it thinks that you're stopping or you're slowing and it takes you the line. So some of these riders, particularly on these hard slopes at the end here, their power has gone down. So uh, to, to the point where RGT thinks that, so the platform thinks that they might be slowing down and they've uh, you know, we've seen a few of them um, moving to the side of the, the course. But uh, Drosky there keeping a good power, 1.2 watts per kilo, steady power coming up this slope uh, with just over 200 meters to go uh, before he gets to the line. Um, I'm saying he, hopefully I haven't got that wrong again, um, but uh, again, dare, dare I say it again, I don't think Drosky has done, although I was wrong the last time I said that about, um, about Holly, but uh, I do not see, checking again, I don't see Drosky's name on the list of riders for the previous event. So I think this is Drosky's uh, first race. But hopefully uh, we'll be back for more. And hopefully um, with RGT uh, having the hand cycling recumbent uh, avatars, um, more and more of uh, these hand cyclists will come to RGT, both for their um, uh, both for their training and for their racing. And as I say, great to see Echelon. I mean, Echelon, um, 
Yeah, you can have a look. I mean, Echelon have their own website, so uh, you know, I, I won't try and summarize, but Echelon is very involved with veterans, uh, veterans in the States uh, and disabled and uh, wounded veterans in the States uh, and does a lot of um, activities and support uh, for them in terms of um, awareness and, um, and support for, for, for various physical activities. So this is very much in line with Echelon's mission uh, to support veterans. So Joski now with 80 minutes to go, just up above that. Yep, there we go, gone green. It's all easy from here, Joski. Well done for finishing uh, in um, uh, sixth place in the hand cycling. Uh, so great effort there. Great to see uh, all these riders finishing the race and uh, not giving up even though those eight, nine, ten percent slopes must be absolute hell uh, to go up in a uh, hand cycle. Well done to all the riders in the hand cycling uh, and the paracycling, um, Joe Berenny as well, we saw earlier. Um, as we now cross back to the women, and uh, we're going to follow Cara Bono, who has just under a lap left to go in the women's race um so we'll follow this for the last couple of um riders so we'll follow probably up to yeah dora is not far behind so we'll follow um bono and dora as they cross the line uh with uh, gl still some way back uh you can watch later on um i think we'll be starting very shortly um uh if i can find it i will tell you um the uh the pro race uh, coming up uh later on um doo -doo 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 -doo. no i haven't got that in front of me but uh the pro race will come on i'm sure if you check on the zms uh, facebook page uh you will get the schedule of races there you can see the uh names going across the bottom there's nms live stream. oh pro is sorry um, I, my mistake the pro is next week um uh sorry about that so the pro racing is next week so come back next week to watch the pro series there it is on the screen what am i saying echelon racing league pro series is next weekend and there's the website there that you can check out echelonracingleague.com uh to get the schedule of events uh and watch the pro races uh, next week. So uh, come back for that. All of it being broadcast on ZMS live stream, um, who do a fantastic range of racing. Uh, the Echelon racing, uh, a lot of RGT racing. Um, I do this, um, all sorts of racing takes place during the week on RGT, Some of it, a lot of it organized by the community. Uh, and you'll see a lot of these names uh, that you're seeing today in some of the races uh, during the week. So Cara Bono now with uh, 300, just under 400 meters to go until she crosses the line. And then uh, I think it was Eva Maria Dora, not far behind her. And uh, yeah, we'll cross the line. Not only, I think, partly needs to go because um, my uh, family is waiting for me to make pizza for them. I've uh, made pizza dough and uh, my daughter is home for the weekend. Um, she's uh, training to be a pro rider of a different kind of the things that have four legs. Uh, and uh, she's back for the weekend and asked for pizza tonight. So it is my fatherly duty to go and make pizza for my daughter. As Cara Bono now with 130 meters, she's nearly at that crest. Great riding from Cara to, to keep up the effort. Um, a lot of these riders were riding pretty much solo the whole time, um, you know, which is hard to, to keep up the effort, hard to keep up a good rate, um, but good training and good mental training um, to keep going. So Carabano now crossing the line, fourth in the women's race, and Eva Maria Dora will be not far behind her. She's nearly up, she's got about 150 meters to go on this little climb. Uh, and we'll cross the line and uh, we'll wrap it up after that. But if you uh, want to see more of the racing and uh, catch the results. Um, so the final results will be on the website. Um, you saw before then the um, Echelon Racing League 
uh, .com. Um, go to echelonracingleague.com for all the results um, in all the events. So the men's, AB, the women's, the paracycling, the hand cycling, um, all those results you can find if you go into the Echelon Racing League website, um, as well as the calendar and the start times. Even Maria Dora over there, well done, crossing the line in fifth place um, to finish off our coverage of the Joe Martin Stage Race uh, Community Series in Fayetteville. So it's been um, it's been great racing. We've seen uh, some really good rides. We saw mostly pairs. Um, we saw some great pairs out in front in the men's A and B race, who really pushed it all the way to the line. We had great racing from uh, Kate and Anna in the women's until Kate made her decisive move with a good 10 kilometers to go. And similarly in the uh, hand cycling uh, with Kuman and Kovalainen uh, taking it up in the um, hand cycling, staying together and uh, Kuman making the decisive move uh, um, to uh, come away with the hand cycling. So um, great racing from everybody today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the racing today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the commentary. It's been my first time on the community racing, but I've certainly uh, enjoyed doing it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed ZMS live stream. As I say, uh, they do fantastic coverage. Check out their Facebook page um, for all the events that ZMS live stream do, and check out echelonracingleague.com for all the results from all the series. Uh, as well as the pro series coming up and make sure you join for those races thanks for watching i hope the, you have uh, a great the rest of your weekend is great you get some riding in thanks for joining us see you again soon bye